So hello guys, again this is a continuation of our series of discussions in group theory as what I've mentioned in our discussion in part 3 that in our next video which is this video we will be proving that the commutation or the commutator of two generators is again a generator. So suppose we consider this generators SJ and SK of R such that R is a function of theta, which, as you know, this is a rotation matrix, no? Or a rotational matrix. Is equal to E to the I epsilon SJ, and R is a function of phi is equal to E to the I epsilon SK. Represent the group elements, G as a function of theta and G as a function of phi, with infinitesimal exponential parameters given by these equations. Then, the inverses of these group elements as functions of theta and phi respectively, is actually just equal to g as a function of negative theta and g as a function of negative phi respectively. And consequently, if we're going to get the representation of the matrices or, or the matrices that represent these group elements, basically we can find out that r as a function of negative theta, which basically is just the inverse, no? of R as a function of theta is actually equal to E to the negative I epsilon SJ and R as a function of negative phi is just equal to the uh, exponent to the negative I times epsilon SK. So if we multiply these group elements, we have as a function of phi and as a function of theta multiplied to their inverses, this could actually be written as a G functional we call this one as a functional because basically this is a function of psi which is also a function of theta and phi. And consequently, if we're going to get the matrices, these uh, elements of the group are represented by these matrices which could be expressed as well in terms of our functional which is a function of psi which is also a function of theta and phi. And the same for the primed ones. We can always get the same only that we just have to replace this R or this rotation vector or matrix into uh, by R prime. Now, with the same infinitesimal exponential parameters, theta, we have theta, phi, and psi as a function of theta and phi. Consequently, by multiplying those rotations or those matrices, as we know, this is R phi. Let me just review. Yes, so SK is for R phi, and this is R as a function of theta, and these are their inverses. We could actually expand this exponents in terms of this series, or in terms of this uh, quantities, such that we have 1 plus I epsilon SK minus 1 half E squared, or epsilon squared times SK squared, times 1 plus I epsilon SJ minus 1 half epsilon squared times SJ squared, crossed to... 1 minus i epsilon sk minus 1 half epsilon squared sk times 1 minus i epsilon sj minus 1 half epsilon squared sg squared. And this is very straightforward. This is just uh, performing directly the cross product or the cross of this first term. We may just call this one as the first term and this is the second term. By performing this one, straightforwardly, we can have 1 plus epsilon squared times sj sk, which are commutators, minus sk times sj. And obviously, here, we can directly see that sj is obviously not equal to sk, because if they are equal, everything else in the second term of this equation on the right-hand side will be equal to zero, and these exponents will be equal to one. Now, this is actually the definition of the commutation of two generators or of two operators which could be written simply by this. So this is equal to 1 plus epsilon squared times the commutation of SG, SK. And the same as well for the primed ones. We just have to actually indicate that these are primed ones by repeating the same process. So we can have 1 plus epsilon squared times the commutation SG prime and SK prime. Now, the these are represented, no, as we know of, this um, R functional, or of this rotation matrices, R is a function of psi, which is a function of theta and phi, 
And this is approximately equal to 1 plus epsilon squared times uh, the commutation of SG and SK. And this could be expressed in terms of the summation. And these are actually very straightforward, no? And the same as well for the primed ones, the same process. So we just have to really indicate that these are primed ones. And obviously, if we compare this one, we have here one, this is one. We have epsilon squared, we have epsilon squared. So obviously, we can directly see that the commutator or the commutation of SJ and SK is equal to I times the sum of SJK to the LSL. And the same as well for the primed ones, only that we have to indicate that this is a primed one. So this is the proof no, that the commutation or the commutator of two generators is also a generator because basically this, uh, this are, uh, these are also uh, generators. Now this one's, this one's in the right hand side of the equal. So I guess that's all if you have some questions or clarifications regarding the derivation because it's, it's quite very straightforward. So if you have some questions, or if you want me to derive more about something, please just comment in the comment section of this video. Thank you so much.